Hey, do it again. Okay. That sound is bad. Click it again. Okay, okay, because okay, this battery's good. Mm -hmm. Sounds like the starter's trying to engage, um, but it's not turning the engine over. It tells us the engine may be seized. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Gosh, dang it. Uh, that's exactly what we didn't want to hear when we tried to crank on this engine. Uh, the click doesn't necessarily mean that the engine was seized, but we later found out that it was. Sometimes that, that click will just indicate like a, uh, a starter that's not fully engaging uh, or like a relay that's just, just clicking, making that clicking sound because the battery is weak. Um, in our case, we felt like that starter was fully engaging. Um, just the sound was deeper and clunkier. So we knew that the starter was engaging with the flywheel. Sometimes the starter is seized as well, but uh, we ended up putting a camera down the cylinders and saw that there was some water and rust in those cylinders, and we thought that was probably the reason that uh, our our boat was seized up. So uh, my friend Genius Mike came over, gave us a few insights as to what was going on with the head gasket, and uh, helped us understand a little bit how we would need to move forward and getting this engine fixed and getting the pistons actually moving. So that's what you're going to see in this video. Stay tuned. Yeah, slow down, let's ride a wave And let it take us to another place And maybe we can know now, let's take a chance I feel like we can make this thing last You got it going on, you got the right feel The vibe is in the air, I can tell it's how you feel And then you look at me, and then I look at you They told me you was beautiful Ramen Alright, I can go ahead and just look at all those and tell us what you Don't turn it like a normal person There you go This is number one Give us a uh, rundown of what's going on in the There's a little bit of rust right here. But some of these have a lot of water corrosion on it. The same thing as number one, kind of. Three. Look at that. It's from water. It's not even. Four. Didn't wonder if that oil, I guess, whatever. That needs to be in in order to crank. Maybe. Maybe. Five. No. <laughs> Six Cro size rust corrosion. Seven. Eight. Eight. Our cylinders are still uh, locked up, so we're just putting a little bit of diesel into each cylinder. We'll come back tomorrow and try to break them free. Our hope is that the uh, head gasket blew and leaked water into the cylinders and that's it um, but we'll, we'll know a little bit more once we start tearing into it yeah, two I, problems that i found so far i don't know yeah. when i first came here gentlemen this valve was off okay that's a big deal because that's what's pulling your water in from the lake now next thing kaika next thing uh, this doesn't seem super important. It looks like it's just a extra something something, but there's a there's a definite kink yeah, right there All right pulled the distributor out probably improperly. Uh, we did mark it over here with some chalk up in there And there's some chalk right here that tells us that's where it goes. Go, go back to that uh, Did you loosen all those up Nate? Just oh. loosen them. I don't want you to pull them out. Oh, okay. Just loosen them. All of these? Yes so We're loosening up the intake Manifold right now. Do you this one here? No, no, yeah. You didn't even see that one. It twisted. There's some hoses Twist off them. there, it looks like. We have the intake off. I can't remember when we last looked at this. Uh, That's on pretty tight. Ah, oh, crap. And we're working on getting this last manifold right? off. Oh, what the freak? You alright, Nate? Are you uh, this is the first look at our cylinders and our head. Uh, one thing that I'm no I don't notice any breach in the head gasket, but what I do notice is the discoloration here, um, which is unique. Uh, it's on this side of the engine and the other side. Also, these are the two cylinders that have um, have the rusting. So I hope, if we're lucky, this engine has. Uh, 
uh, the ability to move over and crank after we free up this rust. So, the cylinder seems okay. Oh, looks like there was some water in it. Um, this is there's diesel up in that one, so I don't know. Nate, will you video that side and just yeah. look, get a look on it? So it's the same issue here. <laughs> one interesting thing is uh, the distension of the gasket here. It's not really circular. It, it looks as though it might not have been as clamped down the way that you'd like, as tight as you'd like it to have been. But I'm going to remove all the moisture here and then soak it some more in some diesel and see what happens. Sweet. All right, so I'm trying to unseize this engine and I have decided to just crank on the shaft, the crankshaft. I'm going to put some, some bolts in these little holes. Uh, and then just pry on them with a big long uh, cheater bar. Um, I'm going to remove a few of these things to make it just easier to get access to. All right, so my friend, Genius Mike, told me that that might have been a problem. The problem with that is that uh, there is a rubber ring here on the harmonic balancer. You can see it to a little bit here to the left. And that harmonic balancer um, is connected with that rubber. So if I cranked on that too hard in the wrong place, it could shift the harmonic balancer which it ended up doing so when I went to go set up my timing my timing marks were off because I'd shifted the harmonic balancer I'll show you another picture here in a bit about exactly what happened now this is my setup here and it seems as though it's working so the big problem is I put the bolts here on the outside uh, you see those holes on the outside if you looked at the previous pictures uh, the there were a couple of bolt holes on the inside that I should have uh, used as my leverage points uh, because I didn't uh, the rubber slipped and caused once again my timing to be off. Uh, big freaking just ugly old workout equipment bar. Uh, two long bolts. I, th I think these are, I don't know if they're stainless, but they're, they came out of a wave runner, so. Uh, strong enough, but there's the good news. We're getting movement in my. Watch these, see which one goes down, down. Okay, there's our cylinders. Eli dude, that one looks way better already, dude. What did you do to that, Elias? What'd you do to it? Steel wool. Steel wool. Show me the steel wool. There it is, yeah. Take some steel wool. You dipped it in the diesel fuel, I guess, for some uh, lubrication. Dude, that cylinder looks way better already. Well, crap, I should have should have documented this earlier. Because I've already been working on the other side, too. This is what I've been working on on this side. Lisa, I've been helping. I can't really see the sun really shining on it. I think this one and this one were my worst yeah. cylinders. This one's good so far. What's up, Daddy? Hey, who's been drinking my Coke? Not me. Oh, interesting. That's good me, Dad. Alright, so uh, Nate and I here have been working on just cleaning out these cylinders. Let me look at this one real close. There's some... There's some pitting in this one at least. Hopefully you can see it, but uh, uh, this is a $780 boat, so we're not gonna freaking rebuild this whole engine. Uh, we're gonna hopefully get this thing to run. And uh, um, so right now we're just smoothing it out. And now needs using a brass uh, wire brush. Uh, we've used some steel wool and also some sandpaper just to get some of the high pieces off. Uh, you'll see pieces of gasket down here as we bring it up to top dead center on each side we we uh, take the head gasket off so we're close to being having clean cylinders and we'll be on to the next step soon
think your side looks good. Um, this one's got some stuff up. Slow down, down, and let's slow 